Are you hungry? Give me something, something good. Hi, and welcome to another episode of Girl Girls. Today we're in Vienna at the restaurant called, I don't know if you can see it in the background there, Cucina Itameshi. And full disclosure, these are some of my best friends, but I think it's still worth showing it to you. But let's go inside and have a look. They cook most of the stuff, basically all the stuff on open fire. And it's 35 degrees outside and probably 40 degrees in here. Four or 40? 40, 40 degrees in here. It's an old Venetian palace that they took over about, I think it's seven months ago now. So today most people are sitting outside but we will stay inside because there's a fan here. And that will keep us at least a little bit cooler. But now, let's sit down and order. I've had two different menus. There's a, for lunch, there's an express one and there's the standard tavolata one. We have a lot of time today, so we'll go for the tavolata. And I think we'll for sure try the miso butter with bread We'll have some exo beef carpaccio. I think we might have some mussels and some pasta. I'll show you all of that when they come. So Cucina Itameshi, it's basically a crossover between Italian and Japanese cuisine. My understanding is that Itameshi is the Japanese word that the Japanese use when they cook Italian food. So it's basically Italian food with a Japanese influence in some dishes some more and in some dishes some less and uh, most of them have some kind of Japanese ingredients as well for instance there's a cacio pepe udon so instead of using the, the normal pasta they use udon noodles but we'll have a closer look once we get some of our dishes so here we have our carpaccio or exo beef carpaccio Exo Beef is an Austrian company, also from Vienna. It specializes in good meat, basically. It's basically like a standard carpaccio. You have your parmesan, you have good beef. Mm. But once it's in your mouth, it's very much Japanese. Excellent. Feel the wasabi coming through nicely. Has a bit of a spice on your tongue. And obviously the onion sukumono. As I mentioned at the start, I'm biased because he's a friend of mine, but I thought I had to share it with you because I really enjoy this. to forget the whipped piece of butter that's also just a, a perverse joy to eat I could eat it with just a spoon but it's nice to have some bread with it I'll see you for the next course. I don't know if you, know if you could see on the carpaccio. Um, I spoke to Eddie about it, who is the chef here, and one of the founders. Um, and in a lot of lesser Italian places, you, you kind of can tell that they freeze the meat and then they slice it in a slicer. But what they do here is with like what the Italian nonas used to do, the Italian grandmas, so they cut it a bit thicker and then they beat it thin, which obviously also adds to the tenderness of the meat, you can say. So it's a, it's a tip. Don't freeze it and slice it, but slice it a bit thicker and beat it out to flatten it. Just put it between two sheets of, of um, um, what do you call it, bacon tray paper, 
and you heat it, or you can put it through in between cling film as well, then you use that instead. We have received our kotze. Let's dig into this. And if you follow the channel, you know that I grew up in Belgium, so I will eat one. And then we use the shell as our tool. Mm. Oh, we even have a bowl, so I'll put them there. Now let's get into this broth. Mm. It's fantastic. You can really taste the yuzu kosho. We have the nice croutons. That's not really croutons, but nice toasted bread. We soak that in the, in the bouillon. It's fantastic. I'll eat this and I'll see you when we're done in the next course is here. Now what I didn't tell you are these pieces here. We're still with the mussels, but that's what they call krammer in Austria. And it's basically pork fat, crispy pork fat. So that adds a lot to the excellence of this dish. So our last official dish, I don't know if we can manage to serve, but let's see after this. This is the pasta mentaiko. So it's a pasta made with ramen noodles. And mentaiko is the salmon roll. I hope you can hear me well, because there's a there's road works going on just outside the window. And it has some uh, katsubushi on top, some nori, but let's dig into it. We'll mix all of this together. Some nice bonito flakes on top, just dancing around in the heat. It's a bit of spring onions as well. And we'll, we don't eat it like pasta, we'll eat it like ramen. pure umami and the ramen noodles these are the thicker version they have a very nice bite to them mm. so I will finish eating this and then we'll, we'll summarize or see if maybe we have space for dessert so I went for dessert and being a Japanese Italian fusion, they have perfect gelato here. And I went for passion fruit. And they're talking the whole time in the background, so you might not hear me, but this is perfect, especially for a day where it's 35 degrees outside. Mm. Amazingly refreshing. So we'll eat this in peace and quiet, and then we'll sum up the experience outside. So that was our Cucina Itameshi lunch. If you're in Vienna, definitely well worth a trip. Um, I'll put all the details in the, um, in the section below to have a look there. But that's it for this time with the Gurgit on tour from a very hot and sweaty Vienna. I hope you enjoyed the episode, and if you're ever in Vienna, go check it out. Let me know what you think about it. I promise you, you're not going to be disappointed if you like what you saw today. If you have any questions, as always, leave a comment below. Um, don't forget, hit the subscribe button if you're not a subscriber yet. Check the bell icon to get notifications. And hit that thumbs up button. That's really important. It really helps me to get my content out there. It doesn't take you very long either. That's it for this time. Until next time. Take care. Bye bye.